Well, the next time our astronauts make it to the moon, they won't have to worry about taking the wrong turn. Scientists have created their first comprehensive map of the moon. This 360 degree map is based on six geological maps from NASA, along with data from recent satellite missions. NASA says it'll be used as a reference for lunar science and future missions to the moon. Well, 30 years ago today, April 24th, 1990, NASA launched one of its greatest exploration tools, the Hubble Telescope. Three decades later, the telescope continues to give us a glimpse of the boundless beauty of our universe. Earlier today, we talked to Elena Sabi from NASA's Space Telescope Science Institute. Hubble has been amazing. Uh, we launched Hubble because we wanted to know uh, how old the universe is. And thanks to Hubble, we now know it at the precision of 1%, that is 13.8 billion years. But also Hubble has revealed a lot of uh, mysteries of the universe that we didn't even imagine. So for example, now we see that the universe is not only expanding, but this expansion is accelerating because there is a mysterious something that we call dark energy because we don't know better that is causing this and this was discovered thanks to Hubble. Hubble gave us the first observational evidence that there are huge black holes inside of galaxies and then thanks to Hubble we've seen how planet forms we see that uh, even around we were able to study the atmosphere of planets in uh, that are orbiting around other stars than our sun so Hubble really has revolutionized our understanding of the universe. I understand for the 30th anniversary, Hubble released a new image. Can you tell us about this diamond anniversary gift? Oh yeah, it's beautiful. You have to go to the nasa.gov slash Hubble and see how outstanding is this image. It shows a huge stellar nursery that is hosting hundreds of stars, 10 to 20 times more massive than our star. And these stars are incredibly engine that are releasing a huge amount of energy, exciting the gas that shows in shades of red and blue, and they are also creating wide cavities and filaments and vortex in this image. This is a very dynamic environment, and it's how the first few million years in the life of a star can be. So one of the most massive stars that form in this region has actually been kicked out of, of the stellar nursery and is now zooming through the galaxy at a speed that is about 67,000 miles per hour. And these stars is the bright stars that you see in the lower corner with the, the ra uh, bright blue ring of gas around it. This is a star that is almost uh, dying and it's already losing its uh, external uh, envelope. But many more stars are forming in this region inside bright red and orange globules around uh, the image. Hubble had a kind of a rough start. It didn't, it wasn't working properly at first, right? Yeah, we had to give it a, a good pair of glasses, but now it's uh, <laughs> working incredibly well because we had fun, five fantastic servicing missions that every time provided it with better instruments. And so we, it, we, it continues to be one of the most powerful telescopes uh, that we have even after 30 years. Wow, and may, some people may not realize that the Hubble Space Telescope has a connection to Madison. Yes, one of the most important cameras on Hubble was built in Madison. Unfortunately, we had to remove it 10 years ago, but it worked for 15 years and it provided some of the most amazing and revolutionary um, image. The pillar of creation, that is one of the most famous images that Hubble uh, thought, was taken with the camera made in Madison. Wow, wow that's, that's, isn't that amazing? That, that's neat. So what's next for the telescope? Hubble has just learned how to study the atmosphere of planets that are orbiting around other stars. So we definitely want to learn more about the chemical composition. We want to see if there are seasons similar to what we see on Earth. And then Hubble continues to look at our solar system. And because it is doing this for 30 years, we've seen changes in the atmosphere of planets. And we, we see these small changes that are incredibly slow, but because Hubble has this long life, we are able to study that. And then next year, NASA is going to launch the James Webb Space Telescope. And we are really, really eager to be able to use Hubble and James Webb at the same time to understand the distance universe. So how should people celebrate Hubble's 30th birthday? <laughs> you should go to the nasa.gov slash Hubble, and there you can find the anniversary image and much more, like videos, podcasts, interviews. And then Hubble is tweeting, and you can follow it on social media using at NASA Hubble. Well, happy birthday, Hubble. It's <laughs> yes. quite a milestone, and long live Hubble. Thanks for being with us today. Great to see you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Me. Thank you. Goodbye.
And again, the website she mentioned is nasa.gov slash Hubble. The website has lots of cool interactive features like virtual tours of the Hubble spacecraft and control center. And you can also enter your birthday to see a picture on that day from space. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. And when it ever reopens, check out the space place on Park Street. Yeah. They have part of the Hubble there. That's right. The camera that yeah. was made in Madison mm -hmm. is there.